back, this is Dave Vellante. We're here day two, EMC World 2013. This is theCUBE, where we extract the signal from the noise. We bring you the best guests that we can find. We like to talk about tech athletes. I'm here with David Floyer, the CTO of Wikibon, uh, my personal tech athlete, and, uh, and Surya Varanasi, who is the Vice President of Engineering uh, at EMC within the new software-defined storage group, the, the Viper group. You were employee number one, I understand, of Project Born. You were essentially brought in to really get that project started, right? Yes, yes I was. I was uh, hired in from VMware to start this project. Yeah, okay, so let's, let's take, it, take us back to the, to the beginning. When, when was this now? You're talking about a couple years ago? Right? November 2011. November 2011, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> <laughs> what, was the, what was the language that was even used back then? Uh, was it software-defined storage? Was it, hey, we have this idea? You know, what do you think? Take us back to the instantiation of... So, you know, back then uh, we were looking at two trends. The biggest trends we were looking at was, you know, we had heterogeneous storage that uh, we have in the enterprise and we were thinking about what does it take to convert that to a private cloud? What does automation mean? And then we were thinking about taking objects to the next level and what do we need to do to actually provide that service to service providers. So those, those were the big focuses, if you will. Okay, so the name, Project Born. Was it, well, I infer that's Jason Born, is that right? Or it is, it, it is Jason Born. <laughs> okay, so it's a, it's a deadly killer, it's all, it's, it's a stealth, <laughs> it's, uh, it's very uh, efficient uh, and, and adaptable. <laughs> is that, yep. those the characteristics? Survivable. That you guys, it's survivable, <laughs> right, right. That's right. And, uh, okay, so then, so uh, EMC brought you on from, from VMware. How did Project Born you know, evolve into Viper? So you know, before it started off being born, it started off being storage OS, the underlying platform, if you will, on which you can lay on services. So our plan from the very beginning was to actually build a platform that does two things, provide automation and think about uh, new data services that people want. So you know, along the way uh, we thought, okay, storage OS, that's very blah, we need a new name. So it, uh, we had a lottery, if you will, on names, and uh, Project Born was the uh, official name that we ran under. So that's how it came about. Yeah, because there are storage OS's out there today, right? right? So that's what's right. different about uh, uh, Viper as a storage OS, if you will, as a platform, than the uh, you know, everyday run-of-the-mill storage OS, of which EMC has a number of them? For one thing, we're not tied to any platform. So we sit as a layer above any platform, we're completely on software. We manage a whole bunch of uh, heterogeneous arrays that have their own OS's on it. And uh, what we actually do with the platform is we try to provide services that can leverage uh, services that are written on top of our platform across all the physical infrastructure. So that's, that's the big focus for us. So we're actually not buried inside any system, if you will. Okay, so, um, so now we've, 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 your baby is born. <laughs> <laughs> and you're seeing this, uh, this, this product come to market. Uh, Dan, David Floyer and I were trying to, again, unpack uh, uh, Viper yesterday. So, you talk about separating the control plane from the data plane. Why is that important and what does that, that bring for your customers? So there's two challenges that we see when we go into uh, and talk to customers. The first is, they, they buy best of breed equipment today. And uh, you know, best of breed could be EMC arrays, third party arrays, who knows what they buy. What ends up happening is they actually provide solutions that work for everybody, but managing this is extremely complicated. So the first need for the customer is, can I provide automation to make it simple to manage existing infrastructure? That's, that's the first big push for us. The second thing is, that, as you heard throughout the conference here, people want to know, hey, you know, yes, we have block and file and we consume that, we know what to do, it's complicated, but okay, I understand what to do. For things like the new data services, you know, be it object, you know, or be it HDFS, how do we adapt? What do we need to do? How many solutions do we need? So we wanted to provide a single place where you can do both. And that's, uh, that's fundamentally uh, so, Viper. So do you, uh, you yeah. want to jump in there? Go ahead. Yeah, sure. So, um, and then, uh, so you provide a set of services at that layer. So the automation mm -hmm. and, and uh, provisioning and mm -hmm. all of that is at that layer. So where do you draw the line? Um, for example, you could put replication there or you could put, um, uh, thin provisioning there, or you you could put ODX there, ODF uh, from you know from Microsoft there. W where do you draw the line uh, between a service 
uh, which uh, which you would expect to see, like for example replication, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, uh, and and would be useful. So, for example, you take um, Invista um, that mm -hmm, had mm -hmm, the services, mm -hmm. uh, common services yeah. for all the stuff that were underneath the virtualized level. So, what's your thinking about that? So, so the first piece of the uh, puzzle for us, if you will, is physical infrastructure already contains appliances, if you will, where we can solve uh, similar problems, right? You've mentioned Invista. So we have Vplex, which does the same thing. It sits in the path and it's an it, HA product. Yeah, it, 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 right? doesn't, it doesn't do um, much of the services though, does it? It no, leaves it, that to no, the No, but you're just giving yeah. an example mm -hmm. of yeah. an appliance. Yeah. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah. you have Vplex, which is actually a storage array, but it also provides these services about HA and, mm. and uh, availability. You have things like uh, Recover Point that provide us data protection you can copy from an array to another array. So wherever we can, the hardware underlying infrastructure, we try to leverage it. If it's not possible to leverage it, then we'll try to augment that with services of our own. That, that's the first piece of it. The second thing is, you know, we have solutions that actually provide consistency to applications and so on for individual physical arrays. So we provide a common set of APIs on the system so you can provide the same services across all the infrastructure. Right, so that's that's what we do. So to answer your question specifically, do we draw a line anywhere? Not really, but we try our best to leverage what we have to right. get the best possible solution. But for customer. example, snapshots will be a, 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 to me a quite a good thing to have above the line. You know, Absolutely. To be, to be the same across. Because so we uh, provide a snapshot API. Okay. And when you take a snapshot against uh, a Viper controller, right. the snapshot is implemented across any of the physical arrays that we support. So good. all those solutions we provide as a single place that you can consume. So I have Excellent. a question uh, on Twitter. The, the question is, so uh, just a clarification, mm -hmm. is, is Viper uh, an appliance? Viper is a software solution, so you download it as an OVF on ESX. So it's, not, it's a software appliance, if you will, but no. So it's a software appliance, yeah. if you will. Okay, but it's not, it's not an appliance. It's so, no hardware. So then the, the obvious follow-up is, and okay. It, and it so runs on the VMware. What so does yes. it run on? It runs yeah. on a virtual machine. It runs on ESX. Right. In, at GA, it runs on ESX. Okay, great. So that's the, Sort of, you used the earlier example of an appliance. You used you know, Vplex or any yeah, any appliance. Yeah. That's the difference. It's a it's a it's a software only appliance. That's right. This is right. fundamentally the platform is actually just purely software. It's built for scale out and availability and so on. And as such, you can download it from our website. That's what we built it for. Is there anything out there in the industry that is that is comparable in in concept even, or is this a first in your view? You know, I haven't uh, run into any, I have to admit. Yeah. So, uh, what about OpenStack or things like that? I mean, there they've defined a set of uh, services and then people come in, for example, with uh, SolidFire and they've added some extra things. So, it, it seems to net up a lot of You're saying OpenStack there. is a platform with, a, with, with an a, open with set a, of a, APIs a, a, that can... Yeah, with, a, with individual, the APIs that get tweaked. So to conceptually it sounds similar, what about that, is it? So, so you know, if you think about things like OpenStack or VMware, uh, mm. Dynamic Ops, VCAC and so mm. on, these are cloud automation stacks. They, 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 they orchestrate over compute network and storage. Right. So we, what we provide is a storage platform which plugs into these stacks. So right. for example, we have a Cinder plugin with OpenStack. Right. So you can, if, you use an, if you're an OpenStack uh, user, you can actually use Viper and stitch together the compute uh, network and storage. Okay, yeah. okay. right. Yeah. Okay, and, and so where, where, where are we today and, and where is this evolving? So David Goulden kind of took us through the, the roadmap. We had a demo. Uh, you had you know, mm -hmm. the CTO of mm -hmm. UBS gave a little demo of essentially provisioning yeah, yeah. A, a Vmax, yes, uh, and then uh, promises of you know object interfaces yes. later this year, yes. and then into you know the roadmap in, in 2013. Can you talk about that from a technical perspective? What you know align what what we heard there with what you're working on? Oh yeah, so so you know it turns out uh, it's uh, total alignment, uh, luckily for us. Um, yeah. So we uh, have. Um, Obviously we have VMAX that we demonstrated, we have VNX both file and block, we support Isilon, both NFS and SIFS, and uh, third party we are uh, demonstrating uh, NetApp, that's what we have, so just to show that you know customers do have heterogeneous environments, and they want to automate and install all of this, so we do support that. We will have Vplex and uh, Recover Point when we, when we go out, and, on, and object, so we have object running over uh, in the oh, Viper the object interface. On the Isilon, is that? Yeah. It runs on Isilon, in fact, it runs on any NFS uh, right. uh, filer, yeah. if you will. Mm. And we'll support S3 and Atmos and uh, Swift APIs. 
And here we are going to be very uh, compliant. We're going to say it's wire format compatible, so you don't need to change your applications as is the should just work. So right. what was the hardest part <laughs> from an engineering standpoint that, that you had to you know, break through uh, to make this a reality? So you know, as we defined it as storage OS, and we went to Born, and then we went to Viper, at, at each step of the um, at the journey, if you will, we went and talked to customers and said, "Hey, here's what we have. We've, we've solved your provisioning problem." It's like that's only one third of the problem. I was like, "All right, <laughs> what's the next one third? You need to go program the sand." Yeah. So we go program the sand. It's like you left the last mile out. What's the last mile? Close the provisioning with the server. It's like, okay, we'll close the provisioning with the server, and then once you go there, they'll tell you. Um, you know, you need to replicate, or else you know people put data. They want to move data. Do something about it. So the hardest part for us was each time we went in with customer feedback, we just got more, and we had to take a holistic view and say we need to get this much done to make it compelling to the customer. I think that was the, that was the hardest part for us. Yeah. Right? So storage management and, and data management and volume management is hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes mm -hmm. companies decade to mm -hmm. build that out. So. Where did that IP come from? Was it a combination of, of new stuff that you built or did you pick and choose from parts of the EMC portfolio? Talk about that a little bit. So Viper, um, the controller aspects are completely homegrown. We use open source components but they're truly cloud scale and we built it ourselves. Um, the object piece as well is completely homegrown. We had Atmos as a starting point so we used the Atmos APIs but the architecture itself was quite different. So all of this was uh, mm. organic. Yeah. And uh, you've talked about it being open, and all the APIs mm -hmm. are open. Mm -hmm. Does uh, does that mean that anybody can use them? Does that? Yes. Uh, and what about the openness of the stack itself? Are you selling that? Is that is there a license fee for that? Uh, how's that going to go to market? So I, that is a discussion best for marketing at this point. But I, I think at this point we're thinking about licensing it out. Right. So we're thinking about various options there. But uh, yeah, we're going to get into some of the pricing a little later yeah. on. So and we'll, we'll, in fairness, yeah. stick to the yeah. sort of you know te technical pieces of it. So. Um, I wonder if we could break down a little bit more when we talk about separating the control plane from the data plane. And David, you and I talked about this a, mm -hmm. a little bit last mm -hmm. night, but so let's talk, let's focus, let's start with the control plane. What are we talking about here functionally? What are the functions that are on that side of the separation? So it's, um, it's uh, everything that you do for storage management. So it starts from provisioning. It starts from provisioning your replication, your backup, it starts with thinking about your network and how you program it. So your SANS starts with, it, you think about your host and how you consume your storage. The entire life cycle completely. So when we talk about the uh, data path, we're talking about you know, server to IO, the server to storage IO connectivity. We're not in the data path there. Very much by choice for block and file because some of these protocols are very latency sensitive and you don't want to insert yourself if you don't have to. Um, so that's that's the controller aspect. So you're a separate uh, control. Uh, path to yes. the, yeah. Okay. So, so you, go ahead, dude. So you 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 set up all of this uh, um, so all of this environment. Where do you see it being adopted mainly? I mean, obviously the the enterprise could take that mm -hmm. as a solution for uh, just uh, the. Uh, uh, provisioning of storage, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. There are there are other products out there mm -hmm. that will do mm -hmm. similar things mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. Where do you see it? Where are you focusing this? Is this on the the enterprise? Is it on the uh, the, the uh, uh, cloud providers? Um, or do you see uh, do you see a hybrid platform with some some of it uh, on a cloud provider and some of it on, uh, on uh, in, in the main data center? What what's the where are you selling this to, and who's, who do you think are the, uh, going to take so we, this up? We've spoken to uh, large enterprises, as mm -hmm. well as service providers, and I think um, the easiest way to think about this is anyone who has heterogeneous storage, and really wants to simplify how they consume storage, that's a perfect place to use a product like Viper. Um, so we do two things to, uh, to any enterprise or a service provider. We, we help you manage the today, and we help you provide solutions, we help you by providing solutions for the tomorrow. So we think about automation, complexity, and how we simplify, and we think about object, your HDFS, and other interfaces that you may need for your business tomorrow. So a platform like that, you know, you can use it anywhere. Um, we also provide, you know, as part of the solution, a way to report across all these various uh, different solutions, your file, your block, your object, if you will, per tenant. That's very powerful, right? That's not a solution you get every day. So honestly, Heterogeneous environments, 
where you want to use, uh, you want to solve your complexity today and want to expand tomorrow. That's perfect. Okay. All right, Surya, so, yeah, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and taking us through the, the story of, of, of Born to, to Viper. Congratulations, a lot of hard work. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll be luck. watching. All right, so yeah. this is theCUBE, um, and thank you for watching. We'll be right back with our next guest. We're live from EMC World 2013. All right, thank you.